Thank you. That is, that is being. <laughs> For a moment. Good uh, being. <laughs> So we go now to number 31. To become 31. Being. Well, we spoke about being for almost one hour, and we continue. <laughs> so being, it is what is. Huh? What is. So I saw to you what is the uh, essence and is the existence. Next week we study the problem of essence and existence. Uh, or simply reality. The term being signifies a concept that has the widest extension and the least comprehension. You remember when we study uh, definition. What a definition, a concept gained in comprehension is losing in extension. So extension opposes uh, comprehension. If you see what is a cat, you see a cat is an animal. Well, that is very. Bad. If you see, is a feline. Immediately, you restrain. No? So the more we understand the thing, the more precise it is, the less extensive it is. Of course. No? Okay. Um, so being is everywhere. Uh, being is everywhere. So how uh, uh, being is how we can arrive to the notion of being through our <laughs> human intellect. Huh? You know, being exists for a cat. A cat is in front of a mouse. A mouse is a being, but it does not know it is being. Because he has not the power of abstraction, he has not the power of reflection. You know? So, aside from the fact that being can be said to be the subject of metaphysics, being is also the first thing grasped by the human intellect, the first concept formed by the mind. It is, I spoke about that in the, the class uh, before. Huh? The first thing, when we see a thing, we see that thing exists. If the thing is not existing, we are, we are not searching for the definition. We, we try to know what exists. So it's the, it's the, it, is the, it is the key of advertising. What is advertising is to make people in contact with new products, with, thing, with things. We say, oh, you know, no, we don't know that a, a, a good kind, a special soap, a miraculous soap exists. Exists? Oh, yeah. Immediately, all the women. <laughs> so, what kind of soap? <coughs> we have to provoke uh, the existence of the thing, and now after that, we search what is that, and what is the utility of that, and finally, we go to the store and we buy that. So, knowledge starts from being. Knowledge starts from being. It is because we are in contact with being that we know. Knowledge, oppose, I oppose here Mr. Descartes, does not come from my intellect. Knowledge comes from a, a contact with being. And being is outside of me. I am being, of course. But my knowledge comes from a, a contact with a, a something. Huh? Objective, an object. Remember, we cannot know nothing. We know only something. That means every sense can be moved, can exist only, uh, not exist, uh, maybe in, act to, uh, in action, only if there is the, an object. If there is no object, there is no sensation. Okay? Um, so the term being signifies a concept that has, okay, excuse me, next paragraph. Um, it, if man knows anything, he knows being. The first thing, no? and in fact, here it is the fundamental intuition of St. Thomas of Aquinas. His, his intuition is, there is being. There is being. All the rest follow from that. There is being. 
they got what is it starting intuition I think therefore I am I think what <coughs> I think the I when you say I it is already contact with being huh? <laughs> it is the being of the cat that thing you know in fact we cannot escape that reality everything comes from the contact with being what is knowledge is to assimilate being, the form of being, we studied that in the first semester. Um, so, priority of the concept of being. Huh? One knows the existence of a thing before we know the essence of a thing. We know the existence huh? before the definition of the thing. It is when we know the existence of a thing that we can search for what is that. We cannot search for the, the notion of a disease if we don't know the disease. Fifty years ago, nobody spoke about Ebola. Fifty years ago, nobody spoke about AIDS. So we, it is when we are in contact with some reality, we are searching for the whatness, the essence that, uh, of that reality. That is very, very important, excessively important, because our, the philosophy of St. Thomas, philosophy of Aristotle, is essentially objective. That means my knowledge does not come from myself, like idealists say, huh? come from my contact with the external reality. That means I am measured by the external world. My knowledge comes from that, abstract from that, and not abstract from my mind. That is the difference between idealists like Descartes and uh, the other idealists, Plato, St. Augustine, and those who say, no, my knowledge depends on object. And St. And Thomas, Aristotle, go farther. Don't only they see the object, but it's <coughs> sense object. And nickel enter my mind if first does not pass through my senses. Nothing, nickel. <laughs> Nothing enter my mind if first does not pass through my senses. That means our philosophy, the philosophy of Aristotle, the philosophy of St. Thomas, is objective. <coughs> yeah, there is a big consequence of that. The consequence of that, that means my knowledge is not depending on me. My knowledge is depending on the reality. And if you apply that in ethics, the value, the moral value of things does not depend on my will, of my conscience, depends on the thing. There is an objective value uh, in, even in the moral reality, in, the, in, in ethics. Ethics is not purely subjective. Ethics is something objective. And the object of ethics is nat nature, uh, natural law, nature, the concept of nature. And that, why we can affirm that? Because in our philosophy, we accept universal concept, the value of our universal concept. You remember when we studied before, someone did not accept that. For example, nominalist, huh? the nominalist with Father Ockham. Nominalism. For the Hockham, uh, Franciscan provincial of England, he said there is no universal concept. There is only word, term, word. And if everyone, everyone put under the word what he thinks. So that is the destruction of universal concept, destruction of majesty. <coughs> and that is the source, the philosophical source of Protestantism is there is the denial of the capacity to have a universal concept based not on my own knowledge, based on the object outside of me. And the object in ethics is nature. Nature. Well, you have the problem, for example, we speak about marriage. Well, marriage is measured by nature. And nature is outside. It's something... I, I, I recognize nature, you know, in every... All the creation, generation is made in a sexual way, you know, okay? But I cannot say, no, that, that is, no, that depends on me. It is, I decide what is marriage. I can marry two dog, two cat, I can marry two male, I can marry two women, you know? I put that on the same level. That is subjectivism. And subjectivism is the source of relativism. 
relativism, hein? subjectivism, relativism, nominalism, and in economy, capitalism. But I, I don't want to hurt American. <laughs> but in fact, capitalism is, for, is uh, promoted by Protestantism, by nominalism, by the personal interpretation of the reality. You know? It's not a common good, it is my own interest. You know? Individualism. In fact, nominalism is the source of individualism. If we accept a universal concept, we can be together. If there is no universal concept, we are separated. There is only one Catholic Church and 2,500 Protestant Church in the United States. <laughs> because of that. Okay. So here, why we, why I say uh, uh, that part is important because the philosophy in which we are, uh, scholastic philosophy or uh, I will not say Christian philosophy, but Aristotelian philosophy taken again by St. Thomas, all that is centered on the object. The, the starting point of my knowledge is my knowledge from the word. I receive my knowledge. I don't put my knowledge in the word. After, yes, but not first. The way we know, we know from the word, for example, men for a thousand years, they observe birds. And finally, they understand why birds fly. And after that, they can put what they know from the observation of birds into plane, you know. But we don't create from scratch. We create from the law of nature. And those laws of nature are not in us. They are in the reality. I don't put my knowledge in the reality, but I receive my knowledge from the reality, from the object, from being, huh? okay? So, 31.1.2, uh, priority of the concept of being. Um, okay, we spoke about that already. Huh? Uh, consequently, huh? The, the first judgment is a judgment of existence, to be or not to be. In fact, Shakespeare was a great metaphysician. Huh? <laughs> to be or not to be, that's the question. Hmm? Before, Judging, affirming that thing is good or not, such and such. And before I say John is a good golfer, I must know that John exists. <laughs> After that, in fact, every judgment is based on a judgment of existence. Okay? Um, the concept of being is not only chronologically prior to all other. It is analytical, analytically prior. Insofar as every subsequent concept is some modification of the first concept. In fact, when I, when I uh, affirm something about any object, any, su any subject, I affirm a predicate applied to a subject, it, 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 all the time it is a kind of analysis of the, of the reality of the subject. In the first reality of the subject, it is exists. Because the subject exists, I can say he is Catholic, he is American, he is a golfer, or he is a seminarian, or he is uh, etc. You know? But the first thing, and the verb to be, express existence. Not only to be is a link, we saw that in logic, huh? not only the verb to be is a link between a predicate and a subject, but the verb to be expresses also existence. And in fact, when I tell the truth, what is the truth? Is the correspondence between what I think and what it is in the reality exist. The measure of the truth is existence, being. See if what I think corresponds with that, with, with that exists, I am true. So the reference of truth is existence. Truth is the first in me. It is in me, why? Because it is linked with the reality. It is not, I am true because I, I, I am true. I, I, I am true in the measure why I correspond to the reality. I don't make the reality, I'm not creator. But I am true because I am in relation with the reality. That means, you know, our knowledge, our act of freedom, all that depends on being. 
Being is, is the pervading reality. Being is in everything. It's the reason why metaphysics is so important. So important. Of course, uh, I will not say that on CNN. Huh? <laughs> Come on, go yeah. for it. <laughs> the truth. But uh, you know, it's true. Of course, someone they see the truth. I am. Things are true because of me. No, not because of me. That the only God can say that. Because he's the creator of things. Huh? We are true because we are, we are in harmony. We are in correspondence with the. Being outside of us. So the recognition of the the awareness uh, of what is initially grasped in sense of experience, uh, there is something uh, underlying the formation of the concept of what exists, what is there, what is present to the senses. So everything known by man implies the idea of being. In fact, with this knowledge. It is, un it is to be united with being. The form, we saw that huh? first semester, what is knowledge? It is to receive the form of thing in my mind. That form is valuable in the measure the form exists in the thing. It exists in mind. The same form. Huh? Communion, you remember that? Huh? Knowledge is a communion, international communion between the form of thing huh? and myself. Okay. Uh, when I say the form is not a square, huh? it is the idea which is in the, in the thing. For example, this desk here, made with wood, but the wood is informed by a f an idea, the idea of a table, the idea of a desk. And in my knowledge is true, I am true when what I think corresponds to what is the idea of a desk, that is a desk. Okay. If you go to uh, the carpenter, you say, uh, I, I need four, chair, four chairs, uh, I need four chairs, prepare me four chairs. And when you come one, one week after, he gave you four beds. <laughs> that means there is no correspondence between <laughs> what he think and what you think. You know? is that, and you say, that is a chair, it's not a chair, it's a bed. You know? So the truth is, is it that it depending not first on the subject, depending on the object. I am measured by the object. And that is totally opposed to the concept of relativity. Rel not relativity, relativism. <laughs> relativism, the truth <coughs> depends on me, does not depend on the thing. Right? Okay. The concept of being itself tell men the least above, uh, tell men the least above anything. But it also tells him something of everything as the first concept. I mean, in fact, the concept of being is the poorest concept. If you, have a, if you teach literature, you teach how to write. You will say to your student, avoid the, word, the verb to be, avoid the, the word thing. But in philosophy, thing is the most universal, a thing. But it is the poorest. <laughs> Uh, the point. Because it expressed everything. Huh? Everything. Everything. <laughs> we see that, huh? everything. It's the universal, but the poorest uh, idea. But in fact, that poorest idea uh, is, is the beginning of my knowledge. I depend on the poorest idea of what is a thing to know. Because if there is nothing, I know, I not know. It's interesting. It's apparently contradictory. The first thing, the first reality I know, it's only a thing. What is the word thing? Something existing. And every knowledge starts from that. You know, it's by a comparison, it's like the fetus. It's like the first cell. <laughs> the first cell. The first cell is thing. There is a thing, there is something. And all the rest start from that. It is true for ethics, it is, it is true for physics, chemistry, biology. We start from the little thing and little by little that works. So the being seems to be very poor 
at the same time the yin is solid. The yin is for a, 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 is for an atom, and the yin is for God. And we arrive how we can explain that. And we'll see that in a few minutes by analogy. We use analogy. Okay, so everything knows by men and like the idea of being. I go to the next page, 206. Um, number 31.2. Many kinds of being. Yes. Um, <coughs> Sometimes being designate a positive being. Sometimes being designate propositional being. Sometimes being designate logical being. So being can be considered at three levels. Positive, that means facts, huh? extra mental existence. Something existing independently of my mind. That is the first we call it positive being. Existing outside of my mind, independently of my mind. Uh, since the, uh, at the end of the, since the concern of the metaphysician is with positive being, what interests us it is what exists, huh? with what enjoy existence independently of man's knowing he is concerned with whatever has essence. That means everything that exists is something, and because I want to know, I want to know the essence of that. Man is interesting to know. What is a galaxy? Man is interested to know what is a, micro, a, a microbe, what is a germ, what is a, an atom, what is a neutron. It's interesting, the scope of the knowledge of man, from the atom, electron, to galaxy. Everything interests man. Why? Because everything is being. And what is knowledge? Knowledge is to discover being to be in communion with any kind of being. I saw recently on French television, from France TV, TV5, a program, one hour, about spiders. Wonderful. One, absolutely, I was, I said that, I should have that for my class on philosophy of God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marvel. Sometimes they, are, they seem horrible, but they, they are so, so special, even the, even the, the, the most horrible. Uh, I, I discovered that a spider can have six eyes. I never knew that. Two in front, two in So that's so that I tell my student, why God did not create that with two eyes here and one behind? <laughs> <laughs> but he did. They call the teachers. <laughs> we have that today with the car. Huh? We, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's six eyes. So, uh, but that is being. We can be interested. Somebody they study, uh, they study flies, they study mosquitoes. They spend their life on that. And not, not only for fun, because they have education for disease, for mitigation, etc. But you know that the curiosity of man is universal. Why? Because being is everywhere. Everywhere there is being, everywhere there is a, a, a need for man to know. Man is an eternal curious. Even in eternity, we continue to ask questions to God. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I, 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 I desire to meet St. Thomas and to meet Aristotle uh, and to ask questions with them. No? You can imagine what we want. Huh? But sure, we will be happy and satisfy our curiosity. We will know because our intellect is open to every being, every kind of being. Not a single being is out, outside of our knowledge, even God. That does not mean we know completely. We will know at least their existence. And what is the most important is to know the existence. What is the most important for God first is to know He exists. The rest will come after. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I, uh, some, uh, no, no, ne, ne, uh, after that, um, positive propositional being. Well, for example, Uncle Sam needs you. Hmm? 
Onkel Sam exists only as a fig figure of style. style huh? uh, it's, a, it's not a reality, huh? Onkel Sam. Huh? Uh, in France, say, Marianne. Huh? Marianne is uh, the woman that represents France. So everywhere in the, in, in the town hall, you see Marianne. Marianne is a symbol of France. You know? So, uh, but it's, it's, it, that is not a real being. Huh? It's a propose, we propose that, huh? conventional. And we have also a logical being. For example, the subject, the predicate, huh? all those concepts we study in logic, they are uh, logical. They are, uh, they, are not, they are being, they are mode of being, but they are not real being. Huh? Yeah, be. So categories of being, division of being. <coughs> Not every being exists in the same manner, manner two or seven. Uh, in short, the kind of being that has a sense, positive or real being, is subdivided in two types, substantial and accidental. We saw that, huh? Substance and accident. Being existing in itself, that is substance. Huh? I exist in myself. But the color of my eyes, uh, my, my way, my uh, health, all those things are in me. They are accident in me. Huh? Okay? So we have a substance and accident. So a man does not exist in the subject. The man exists in itself. But my hair, the color of my skin, uh, all that exists in me. Uh, exists in me, but it, but it can change. I made my hair more black before, and now they are white. I hope. <laughs> I hope. I, w I wish they would continue to be black, but you know. <laughs> so that, but I am, I am the same. I am in good health, I am sick, I am the same. But I am not the same. You know? So that, that, that is important because some philosophers, huh, like Parmenides, huh, Parmenides, and he was inclined to assume that everything is being. Parmenides. But, Parmenides. But, you know, everything was the same substance. There is only one substance, one being. All that is one being. And what is the consequence of that? It's pantheism. Pantheism, there is only one being. Being is taken in a univocal way. We studied that uh, soon, just after that. No? So substance and accident. That is interesting. Being in itself, substance. Being in another accident. No? Being in another accident. The color of my skin is in me. Does not <coughs> exist in itself. If you go to the Home Depot, you say, I want to buy five pounds of green, seven pounds of black, and three pounds of yellow. What will happen? They'll escort you to the door. <laughs> you will say, we don't sell color, we sell, we sell paint. Huh? The color is not exists in itself, exists in the, the pending, you know. Substance and accident is the same for us, huh? okay? So accident has no autonomous existence. They exist in the substance. But both exist, both are being. So what is the question? <coughs> is being an univocal term or analogical term? If being is univocal, one, only one meaning, so there is no difference between substance and accident. But we cannot accept that. So we, can, we are obliged to say being is an analogical term. And is the reason why we have to study analogy. In fact, we cannot study metaphysics without studying what is analogy. Anyway, all spiritual realities are known through analogy. All the notion, abstract notion, all. Because we know only through our senses. Huh? Even our abstract term, for example, the word form. You watch uh, NBC, CNN, and uh, 
and the uh, ABC news. You receive news. You receive forms. We call that information. But the word form is abstract, but at the same time it comes from the first sense of meaning of form, round, square, you know. So our language is filled with analogy. Filled with analogy. Even the Bible. The Bible is, is a series of analogy. Parable. Now look at the Gospel. Jesus used analogy, comparison, parable. Why? Because we know through comparison. Because we have no direct knowledge of spiritual reality, immaterial reality. So we use a word. I give an example. When a man is, is dying, for example, when Jesus died, we say in the Gospel, he dismissed his spirit. He lost his last breath. Spirit. What is spirit? Mean breath. So when we speak about the Holy Spirit, we make an energy. Then nobody knows saw the Holy Spirit, no? No. But we have the idea of breath, of wind, you know, of uh, something, um, uh, uh, you know. We cannot catch it, but he is everywhere, the wind, you know. And we use the word spirit. Ghost. It's better to see spirit than ghost. <laughs> Holy Spirit. So our, our language, every day you pray, our Father who art in heaven. What is that? Analogy. Our Father. So you call God Father. And how we can know God is a Father? Only through experience of a Father on earth. That the problem with children as a Father who abuse them, huh? or they have no father, they are only two mothers. Hmm? So we, we say after that, who are in heaven? And now we look at that. Heaven. But the one in Australia, he say, who are in heaven? <laughs> <laughs> that is Anna. We, we, we cannot escape analogy. So it's interesting not to reflect on analogy. Is being, uh, is being a genus? Well, if being was a genus, like animal, for example, to define, you know, we de you remember what is the definition? We define with genus and specific difference. Huh? For example, man is uh, an animal, and is rational. So animal, we are in the same genus as pets, huh? cat, dogs, elephant, scorpion, etc. But we are different, specific different. We are a species. Huh? So we are different. Suppose being be a genus. Suppose being is a genus. Everything is being because being is a genus. How we can distinguish a man from a crocodile or from a chimpanzee? There must be a difference, huh? And that difference is also being. So that means being <laughs> will be in the genus and being will be in the specific difference. In fact, being is not a genus. Being is not a specific difference. Being is everywhere. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, being, how we can know uh, of an idea of being, it is using the concept of analogy. Huh? We know what is analogy. Huh? It is when we compare things and we distinguish in things something common in something different. Well, we spoke about father. Well, father in heaven. God. Our Father, Holy Father in Rome, Francis. My Father, Washington, or I don't know, the founder of your country, you know? Uh, the founder of a congregation, Father uh, Mosey. 
Father, 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 Father. Many, 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 many times we use Father, not exactly in the same way. That means if you use Father, because there is something common. What is common to Father God, Father, the founder of the country, of my Father? What is the idea common to that? To give life. Huh? To, uh, to conduct, to indicate the way, to protect, to feed, to accompany, to love, etc. That is the idea of Father, you know? But can I say, God is my Father, as my Father Antonio Lago, as Washington, the same way? No. So analogy implies something common, a quality which is common. An analogon, we say, an huh? analogon, and something different. A quality common, an analogon, and, and, and different, because we have many, many different ways to apply the concept of Father. And if you speak about being, it's the same. Just a few minutes before, we spoke about substance and accident. And we say that both are being. So both are being, that they both exist. But they don't exist in the same <coughs> manner. Their mode of existence is not the same. Substance is being existing in itself. That is substance. Accident is being existing in another. But both are being, but not in the same. That is analogy. Huh? analogy. Okay. Um, so I go to page 209. Well, here we have huh? being, and all that here, all that is being. Take any kind, huh? any part of that tree, <laughs> huh? of that, and all that is being. So there is something common, but they are different from one another. Hmm? So uh, another notion here, I take uh, page 209 in the square. Being is transcendental and being is immanent. Well, why it is immanent? Because being is present in everything. Everything existing, every mode of existence is being. That means exists independently of my mind. Okay? But being at the same time is in every category. Huh? It is also above every category. Not a single category can say, I am being. Being is mine. Yes? Where is entity in this place? Entity is a reality, a complete reality, independent. For example, I am an entity. Ends. Ends means existing. Huh? Uh, in, in philosophy, entities is, uh, is something existing independently, differently of another. It can be a man, it can be a cat, it can be uh, anything existing, huh? an entity. It's, a, it's an entity. But it's part of being. Huh? But, it, but entity will be part of being. Part of being. It will be part, part of being. Of being. Yes, yes, yes. Entity is a being. You know, uh, everything existing is an entity. That is an entity. Uh, that good entity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but it's not the same. It's not being. It's a being. Equals entity. Yeah. Be, uh, yes. You know, and ends. Huh? Entity comes from uh -huh. the word ends in Latin. Huh? The ends means being. Entities is a being. It's another word for being. An entity. So it's the same? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Existing. Oh, it's okay. A, something existing. Huh? An entity. Huh? Okay. Uh, you know, ens is the participant present of the verb sc. Huh? Sc is to be. That is being. Ens is the present participle. Like singing, like uh, being. You know? Being is not to be. Being is the fact of being, <laughs> of existing. Okay. Uh, so, being is in everything, 
and being is in the thing, is above and in. It's interesting because by analogy, when we speak about God, we have exactly that. God is transcendent, God is immanent. God is in everything from the first electron to the galaxy. Nothing exists without being sustained by God. So we can say God is immanent. It is more intimate to us than we are. <coughs> that is in the Bible, but uh, anybody of the Bible I can say that as a philosopher, because we cannot exist without being sustained by God. We say that in philosophy of God. Okay? God is immanent, but at the same time I cannot see God is the cat, God is the flower. Now God is present to the cat, is sustaining the cat in his existence, but he is above everything. So he is immanent and he is transcendent. And you know, that is interesting because we can apply that to the human soul. Because we are at the image of God, huh? don't forget. Huh? My soul is immanent to every part of my body. My soul animates my own body. You know? At the same time, my soul is able to control, to dominate my body. So my soul is at the same time immanent, at the same time is transcendent. See, because it is transcendent, I can control my appetite. I can control it. I like chocolate, <laughs> but I see. Wait a minute. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> that is interesting. Huh? God is being. In fact, God is being. I am being. And being is in everything. And being is also above everything. God is present. It's not everything. God is present to everything. It's not pantheism to say that. Huh? It is also transcendent. And my soul is present to all my body, is immanent. At the same time, my soul has the control of my body. And that is quite different from a dog. Never the dog will say, you know, today is Friday, I will not eat that steak. <laughs> no, the dog will see a steak. <laughs> don't, don't, he will not eat a steak, he has no skill to okay? okay. The next page. So we arrive to the idea of another. So I will consecrate the rest of the class to this uh, to the idea of another. I told you in the precedent class that analogy is omnipresent in theology. Analogy is omnipresent in the Bible. Analogy is almost omnipresent in our own language. We use a lot of analogy without thinking about that. <coughs> because the formation of many concepts comes from analogy comparison. Okay? Um, so here we come back to logic. Remember the three ways a term can be used. It can be used as equivocal. It can be used as univocal. It can be used as analogical. Equivocal, we remember the term has exactly the same meaning. For example, animal applied to man, to cat, to bird in the same way. We are not more or less animal than a cockroach. We are animal. Okay? That is univocal. Now, Excuse me, uh, no, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, is that univocal? I'm tired. <laughs> Uni, unique, huh? only one, Vo vox, huh? a word, huh? vox, uh, the, the way to we stop with stick, a vox, huh? okay? Uh, equivocal, the same word can have different meaning, for example, back. It can be the language of my dog. It can be the envelope of a tree. It can be a boat, a bank. Huh? So that is equivocal. The same word the, 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 uh, 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 expresses 
think totally different, okay? without any link. And finally, we have between both analogical. That means the, cons the verb, the term, designates something common and something different. So, so when we compare the way the word is applied to many things, we discover something common. Huh? We, we discussed just before about the concept of father. Huh? God is a father, my father, the father. Because we discover something common, huh? they, they, they have at the origin of something, huh? they take care of something, they give life, they protect, they command, etc. They are father. But they are different. To be God as a father and to be biological father is not the same. To be the father of the United States is not the same as to be the father of the, uh, the, the father of uh, a congregation, the founder or a, a priest, you know? So father is the same term, but father has a different meaning. If you take the term king, huh? king can be applied to Jesus, Jesus, the king of the universe. King can be applied to George the Sixth, the king of England, huh? or Henry the Eighth. I prefer George the Sixth. <laughs> 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 uh, if you visit the London Tower, you will see that French Revolution, they were choir boy. <laughs> On the I think there were more people killed in England than in France. Mm. It, it is blood everywhere. Mm. Of course, we don't see blood, but when you know the history, it was uh, very blood. Okay, so George the Sixth, <laughs> and uh, we have Elvis Presley. The king of rock and roll. Remember. <laughs> and we have Joe Blow. Joe Blow, the king of potato. <laughs> now you are, you are a store. King of potato. King of potato. Because he's the best who prepare French fries. Huh? Liberty fry. <laughs> okay, but they are king. How, we can, how are we justified? to speak about Jesus King, George the Sixth King, Elvis Presley King, and Joe Blow. <laughs> because they are the first in their domain, huh? because they are leaders, because they are powerful, because they are excellent, because they are <coughs> transcendent, you know? So I can see, huh? it's the same for a star. The real star are in this, but you are a star huh? if you, you have a, the star in Hollywood is filled with star, you know? Star, is a star, the star, football, etc., the star, you know? So, that is an energy. And, and nobody will, will doubt about that. And they will say that actress is a star. And everybody accept that. But we never saw her with the telescope. <laughs> but we know she's a star because she is bright. Huh? She's brightening in Hollywood. Uh, people like her, etc. So she is like a star in the film, like a star, you know, a compact, a reason. There must be something common. Huh? But of course, nobody will say that, uh, that uh, Elvis Presley is the same level as Jesus Christ, you know. But we know that he was the king of, and many people today continue to go to Memphis, I think, huh? mm -hmm. to venerate huh? the, the king. And many think he's not dead, he continues to live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he did a, a good thing in his life. He, he was not a bad man. He, you know what, he, the best he did, he married a French Canadian. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he married, his wife was a French Canadian. Priscilla? No? Yeah, French Canadian. French -Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> so, can make a good choice sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is an analogy. An analogy, uh, we cannot escape that. If you don't master an analogy, you stop it. Because all philosophy, all theology will be filled with analogy. Okay? 
Uh, now we have to understand the kind of an allergy. So we have established two kinds of an allergy. The first is an allergy of attribution. That means the quality, uh, the perfection, is attributed to one first. So an allergy of attribution. Well, the classical example is health, uh, healthy, health. For me, the quality, uh, the analogon, uh, the quality, is strictly speaking in really in one analogate, in one reality. Where is strictly speaking health? Health is in the body. Health is the body. I am in good health, no? So strictly speaking, health exists stays in the body. So health is linked with the body. But we see huh, health, healthy huh, can be applied to food, huh, can be applied to sport, can be applied to medicine, medication, medicine, huh, remedy, can be applied also to the, uh, the the color of the face of a person, etc. We say that food is healthy. That sport is healthy. <coughs> that medication, that uh, remedy is healthy. And that the face of that person is healthy, express <coughs> health. Where is health in the body? And if we can say the food is healthy, sport is healthy, because each one has a relation with the body. They produce, the, the, for example, the food, sport, produce, help, contribute to the health of the body. The remedy give again health to the body. The color of the face, I'm good color. Uh, if you are yellow, it's not a good sign. Huh? You have to be a doctor. A yellow like a lemon. And you have uh, hepatitis or jaundice. Huh? So uh, if you are red, 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 or oh, oh, you should check your pressure. You know? So the, the, we can see, huh? so we see, oh, that child is a good head. Oh. We have a teacher in school who know that. Huh? It can distinguish the student when they are sick, when they are not sick. Huh? So everything is, can be said, can be said healthy because of this relation to food. But first, health is in the body. Properly, in, intrinsically in the body. We call that analogy of attribution. Huh? When we see attribution, we can see we see predication. Father uh, Wallace used the words predication. Attribution, it is exactly the same. You remember that? Huh? Predicate, subject, predicate. What is a predicate? It is an attribute. You know? The same thing. Huh? Predicate, attribute. Predication, attribution. It is the same thing. And here we see the importance of to know the language. You huh? must know that predication means attribution. It's not predication here, the homily of your pastor. If the word predication for you is the homily of your pastor, you will understand that. Uh, it's true, no? Huh? So here predication means attribution. Huh? The way we attribute a quality of health to many things. And we can attribute that because first it is in the body. So if we apply that to being, well, we can apply that to being, being in itself in and being in the, in the quantity, the quality, the relation, all that are being. But first being is in the substance. Being is in the substance because substance is being in itself, no? 
and the rest is being because they are attached to the substance. So the substance is the one who possesses properly being, and the other by attribution, uh, the other quantity, quality, relation, possession, action, passion, position, uh, when, and you know, remember that? All that are can say uh, being because that they are relation to substance. You know, here, the, the attribution, uh, analogy of attribution as an application. Huh? Okay. Uh, so, I go a further strictly at the bottom of the page. Strictly analogous predicate cannot be so defined. Their meaning is proportional to the subject. Um, huh? uh, for example, Jesus is king, and this prestige is king, uh, just the same king. Uh, the reason of this difference is universal term arise from a complete abstraction from a particular subject in which the perfection is present. So that the difference in the subject does not enter into their meaning. Uh, I, I don't insist on that. If you understand what I explained here, it's sufficient. Okay? In the text of Father Blue, Father uh, Wallace is not easy. It's not easy. It's the reason why you need a teacher. <laughs> okay, next page, page two, eleven. <laughs> Um, well, I spoke about substance, accident, <laughs> okay. Okay, go to the bottom of the page 211. We have um, the pre primary or principal <laughs> analog, the one which chiefly or more perfectly has the compare perfection. For example, here, the body is healthy. In huh? the secondary analog, they participate in the first by linked with the uh, the, uh, the first analog, the food, sport, all that they are a secondary analog. I right? don't insist on that, okay? So, being can be applied, for example, being can be applied to man, can be applied to, to a cat, can be applied to a tree, can be applied to everything. Huh? Not in the same manner. Alors, when we study philosophy of God, we will see that God is being, being, as it. The mean being by himself. He exists by himself. He does not depend on another. Being as it. And we are being ab alio, by another. But both of us, we are being. And to make a difference in English, when we speak about God, we put the capital B. <laughs> being and being. God is being and we are beings. Both we exist. What is the meaning of being existing? God exists by himself. He depends on nobody. But we exist depending on an other. But we exist. So that is analogy. Huh? Okay? Uh, we have a, another application, goodness, something good. God is good, my mother is good, huh? and orange is good, chocolate is good, huh? charity is good, etc. All that is good. So there is something common, but something different. And if we want to apply that, we can say, the goodness exists in itself in God. And we share in his goodness, everything shared in the goodness of God. So when we study philosophy of God, we use that analogy. Because, uh, you know, our knowledge is founded on, on that. Okay? Well, causality is the same. We have many kinds of causality. We have efficient causality, material causality, formal causality, and, and final. All that are causality, but each one is different. They are causes. They express a link of dependency, but not in the same manner. Huh? Okay? Page 212. <laughs> so I, I already spoke, explained attribution. If you go just after extrinsic, 
and intrinsic attribution. I will try to explain that a little bit. The analogy is called extrinsic attribution when the perfection is predicated properly and intrinsically only uh, of the only primary, huh? primary analogy here and not of the other. That is, we call that extrinsic attribution. And that. Intrinsic attribution. The analogy is called like that when the perfection or uh, the quality is predicated properly and intrinsically of all analogates, all analogates. For example, being attributed to substance and being attributed to accident. They are being, intrinsically being, but not in the same way. But they are intrinsically being. You know? They are not ex purely extrinsically. They are a part of the being, you know. My way, my, my, my uh, color, all that, is not my essence, but is a part of my being. If they are intrinsic to me. Huh? They belong to, to my being, to my eye, huh? to my, what I am, okay? Uh, uh, okay. <coughs> now, proportionality. So we, I explain you an analogy of attribution. Oh. Return the example the classic health. Huh? Health is in my body, but health can be in the food, can be in the sport, can be uh, in the medication, etc. And uh, in, in sleep, can that sleep, huh? sleeping? Okay. Now, uh, the other is proportionality, analogy of proportionality. Well, we use that in mathematics. and can help us to understand. We can write A is to B, C is to D. It is an analogy of attribution, uh, proportionality. You can see, for example, 3 is to 6, like 4 is to 8. Huh? You understand that. <laughs> it's not necessary to have a doctorate in mathematics. There is a proportion, huh? a proportion, and there is a ratio, and the ratio is here. Well, uh, okay. So, um, page 213. Huh? Analogy of proportionality, for the is the imperfect resemblance. Huh? Something is common, something is different. It goes to the fourth line, extrinsic Proportionality are all metaphor. All metaphor are extrinsic proportionality. The flower smile, they are welcome. Huh? We compare flower to somebody huh? he, 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 pleasing because he's, he's happy to receive you, to welcome you. Huh? But we have the intrinsic proportionality. Huh? Uh, that means the, the proportionality is in. We see that. Huh? First, analogy of improper proportionality. There is analogy of improper proportionality. When the perfection, huh, the quality, the analogon, huh, is really extrinsic to one of the analogates. <coughs> well, for example, the metaphor calling a king a lion. Huh? Richer, richer, Lion heart. Uh, compare in French we say Richard Coeur de Lion. Richard, heart of lion. So we compare Richard not only to a lion, but to the heart of a lion. No? That is a metaphor. That is a and it is a improper uh, because the quality is outside of the lion. No? When we it's not the same to be a king and to be a lion. <laughs> But make a comparison, you know? We call that a metaphor. In Cameroon, the, the club of the, of the, the, the famous club representing the country is called the Lyon Indomptable. That means lion who can never be tamed, you know? dominated. You know? 
the untamed lion. That is a metaphor. Huh? It's an analogy. We use an analogy like a metaphor is currently in our language. Huh? It's used that many, many times. So, if Father Wilder gives you a definition of extrinsic analogy, it is a resemblance, a comparison in which the analogous note, huh, the quality, huh, is truly intrinsically, properly present only in the principal analog, but is outside the other analog. And is said of them only because of some relation to the primary analog. Metaphor are there. Huh? Metaphor are there. So <coughs> the reality is properly in the man, in the king, but it is improperly in the lion. So we compare the, strength, the courage of the king to the strength, the strength, the power of the lion. Okay? Metaphor. But what interests us, it is proper proportionality. <coughs> that means the quality is in everyone. There is something really common. Uh, a proportionality. For example, when we speak about the king, huh? Jesus Christ the king, the king of England, and this Presley, the king of rock and roll, and uh, Joe Blow, the king of potato. Dairy Queen, huh? the queen of England, the queen of heaven, and the queen of the dairy. <laughs> Burger King. Burger King, exactly. Burger King. You know, if you look attentively, we use a lot of metaphor, a lot of analogy in our language. Okay? Oh, I continue here. So the analogy is called properly when the perception found properly intrinsically in both analogy. For example, a vision is, the is to the power of sight, like simple apprehension to the power of the intellect. Huh? So it is an uh, actuation of the potency. Huh? My vision is putting my sight into act. I can see act is to potency like vision is to power of sight. So when I see, I put my sight into act. You know? When I understand, I put my sight into act. And the other simple apprehension, huh? the first operation of the mind, to the power of the intellect. So what is simple apprehension? It is the actuation of my intellect. So I can put those together and say vision is to sight like simple apprehension is to intellect. So that is analogy of proportionality. Then proper, that means there is a common reality in every term, in every analogy. You know? It's not exactly the same as a metaphor. A metaphor is only a part which is really processing the quality. Uh, the courage, strictly speaking, is the art of, of uh, Richard. Uh, the lion is strong, but strictly speaking, we cannot speak about courage. Courage is for a man, you know? Okay? But by analogy, we, we apply that to an animal. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, substance huh, to his being, like accident uh, to their being, etc. So, the, the analogy of uh, uh, proportionality is also used. Uh, for example, we can speak about. Um, uh, Matter and form, you remember that? Matter and form. So the form is to the matter like the act is to potency. Huh? That means the form determines, actualizes the matter. I have a plank of wood and I put the idea of a desk into the wood. I put the form of the idea into the wood. I actuate, I have a desk. You know? We studied that in philosophy of nature huh? uh, with Aristotle. So that is, and uh, it is uh, 
an energy of pro and the definition of the soul, if you remember that, probably you remember that. <laughs> there is two definitions of the soul for Aristotle. The soul is the act of the body, and the soul is the form of the body. So how Aristotle can say that? The act is determining the potency. So the, the body is a potency to receive the soul. So we can say the soul is the act of the body. Or we can say the soul is the form of the body because the body is compared to the matter. You know, an energy, a proportionality. So we have two kinds of an energy, an energy of attribution, an energy of proportionality. When you study, uh, God, one and try it, when you study, uh, we will come back on that. And when we study the attributes of God, we are obliged to use that. Because when we study God, we study God through analogy, through comparison. Okay? So try, uh, I will not ask you all the detail of that. But it is important, I think, you know, first, what is analogy. Secondly, to know two kinds of analogy. Analogy of attribution, where the quality is properly in one reality, and the other are sharp shedding in that reality, in that quality. Huh? In the example, health is in the body, or health is in the food, yeah? is in the chocolate, is the dairy queen, <laughs> maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> and the other proportionality, my father, God is father, my father, etc. Obia God is king, Jesus is king, uh, George the sixth, and this person, <laughs> you know, try to to f seize the two kinds. Huh? And the, the, the characteristic of proportionality of attribution is A. Huh? The model is A is to B, like C is to D. Huh? That is the model of analogy of proportionality. Huh? Two kinds of analogy. So if you know that, you will be able to understand easily the rest. Okay? Have a good week. <laughs>